Hey Sam Fam, this is Ria from Samaya. And now we will discuss 21st case scenario. Here, first question is, is a chartered accountant uh, who have been appointed as stock audit for, by the audit committee and the, they also have uh, given authorized to accept the appointment as statutory auditors. Could they accept or no? You see, as they were engaged in some internal assignments of the uh, company here or the company or the entity, they cannot accept to be as a statutory auditors. So the associate chart accountant cannot accept as it was offered by audit committee and bank management not authorized. So not that the reason, uh, because the main reason is they should not undertake statutory assignment while they were associated with internal assignments like strong stock audits, concurrent audits, internal audit, etc. So option D is most appropriate answer. And second question is, where the bank's management is authorized to appoint and fix remuneration for statutory auditors without consulting the audit committee or members. No, while appointing the, while fixing the remuneration of the statutory auditors, the resolution have to be uh, taken. Actually, the audit committee has to make um, the recommendations for the remuneration of the statutory auditors. Bank managers cannot appoint or fix the remuneration unless the same is passed by a resolution in a AGM. Option A is most appropriate answer here. And third one is, you have been asked by your senior to verify high value cash deposits at some branch. What parameter document will you verify as a concurrent auditor of the branch? Select correct option from the following. Concurrent auditor have to verify the details of cash remittances to currency, currency chest. Okay. And that's right. Uh, you need to verify the KYC documents of the customers and the reason for high value cash deposit. Yeah, that's also true. Verify KYC documents and verify reason and um, what like verify the discrepancies found in the customer account. This is like wholesome, right? And the concurrent auditor verify the reason for the and uh, discrepancies. You see, uh, C is a sum of A, B and C, A, B and D, sorry. So C has a comprehensively had a more appropriate answer since all the three were right. So option C is most appropriate answer. We have to check the KYC documents and the reason on we have to verify any discrepancies were found or not. And fourth one is how the discrepancy of not preserving intimations of cash remittances to currency chest of bank should be dealt by the concurrent auditor. Okay, uh, you have to uh, understand how the auditor works while he's an internal auditor or concurrent auditor to that of a statutory auditor or a auditor that was or inspector likewise okay statutory auditor what he do uh, he, he does is he's more accountable to the users of the financial statements the shareholders but while as of concurrent auditor or internal auditor they have uh, to they give more weightage for the discussions and they what do they do they try to put the operations more effectively in order than for reporting, what do they, who to whom they report, they report to the board of members, etc. To whom they have audited, like internal committee, audit committee, etc. If they have been appointed, concurrent auditor main attention goes for the discussions and solving and putting their or remedial action and then following up. This is what the concurrent auditor's objective is. Mostly we'll see whether it had been done or should report. If she, uh, yes, it has to report, but if it is a statutory auditor but he's a concurrent auditor right he's mainly concerned with the discussions and all should verify the details email sent and close the matter and minor irregularity can ignore the same no that's not a minor irregularity auditor should discuss the importance by preserving and uh, check the compliance in the next audit period this is like you see they're trying to put some remedial measures and that or uh, doing some follow-up actions so option d is most appropriate and now we'll move on with 22nd case scenario here and uh, first question is the management argued that the reviewer okay what are they they have come for due diligence okay they have come for due diligence okay and uh, the reviewer has no powers to assess the business feasibility as company had been running a profitable business from many years See, the scope of due diligence would be very high and it goes into a deep so much like an investigation for the new investors who come in or any kind of authorities who have made for the due diligence and all so management objecting that was not right so option a is not right reviewer was correct as due diligence covers assessment of business feasibility as well option b is most appropriate answer and um that's it and um 
तो सेकेंड क्वेश्चन है ड्यू डेलीजेंस रिव्यू वॉज गिवन ऑडिटेड फाइनेंशियल फॉर दर इंडियर ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी वन एंड ही आज फॉर मार्च ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी विच वॉज ऑलरेडी ऑडिटेड बाय द स्टैट्यूटरी ऑडिटर्स एंड द मैनेजमेंट डिक्लाइन दिस रिक्वेस्ट नो इवन दे वो ऑडिटेड और नॉट ऑडिटेड the due due diligence covers the scope with regards to the financial statements it is not that only for 3 to 4 years it has to do or only that particular year it has to do it has it has the scope to identify any kind of hidden liabilities or uh, any kind of uh, fictitious assets for, with regards to the financial statements so uh, the management again here is wrong the reviewer can ask for documents even for the period which audit is completed that's right option b is most appropriate answer and uh, option d he the wrong and will see option c can ask for financial statement for a period which audit is completed but he cannot give statement on them no he could give statement on that to the a new investor or proposed investor etc and we'll see the third one the review of your due diligence reviewed the consultation documents pertaining to litigation that were going on with respect to taxation and uh, he decided that the decision by the company in some matters were not correct okay he was also checking the litigation were that included in the scope yes they were included in the scope all the hidden liabilities contingent liabilities litigations or foreseeable or uh, foreseeable like expenditure with regards to any labor claims or uh, litigation expenditure etc so the reviewer needs to have an independent assessment of all the legal or tax cases and overcome needs to be outcome needs to be discussed with the management yes Oh, uh, he has it should have an independent assessment. Option A stands true. We'll see other options. The company should not have provided the documents. No, the reviewer can study tax consult consultation and cannot give opinion. No, it includes in the scope. So he can give tax or not part of review of due diligence. No, they were a part. Actually, they form a significant part. Option A is most appropriate answer. We'll see fourth one. The management may refuse to share the details of the promoters. No. they cannot refuse to share the details of promoters because the ownership and all has to, you see the due diligence was mostly conducted by the new investors so he has to know who are all the promoters and their background and their objectives behind running the business and operating it effectively and regards to the ownership and control over them so uh, management refusal is not right we'll see since the company has already went through forensic audit and uh, they may refuse to promote or details to the reviewer no as a background of promoter is not bearing on financials of the company no we are also talking about the control over the company so that's not right since the company went through process of forensic audit in past the reviewer should not investigate no in the due diligence reviewer has an independent assessment not only due diligence even the statutory concurrent in current auditors pre reviewer Due diligence reviewer, every everybody has an individual assessment of for their individual opinion, etc. So option D, the condition of management is not right, is most appropriate answer. And now we'll see twenty third case scenario here. Okay, is management of New Limited right in asking Mr. Wright to issue report for the last quarter and the financial year whole despite his resignation? What could be the reason for the same? Okay, why he resigned? I signed limited reviews and um. Ah, uh, he tendered resignation on thirtieth January, twenty twenty two. That is, ah, uh, that is in the fourth quarter. He resigned since he had done audit for first three quarters. He has an obligation to, ah, uh, give an audit opinion on the whole financial statement. You see, if he would have resigned within forty five days in Q three, he has to give limited review on Q three and he has to sign Q two also. Since it's forty five, ah, uh, it is Q four. The forty five days limit would not be applicable for that. So he has to give or uh, has to give audit report on the whole financial statements as so. So management was right. Yes, the management is right. Since within forty five days, no, this forty five days limit would not be applicable to Q four. Yes, I is responsible to issue audit report for last quarter since he had done for the first three years. Yeah, three quarters. Yes, option D is most appropriate answer. And as per SEBI uh, LODR regulation, management of old limited why he resigned from this company. Because his wife took loan of six lakh. You see, any auditor or his partner or relative who takes who been indebted for five lakhs exceeds of five lakhs, he'll be disqualified under section one forty one. For one forty one, this signing of audit reports is not applicable. This provision itself is not applicable as he was disqualified as an auditor. So, is the management right? Uh, what could be the reason for the same? 
No, the management was not right because he was disqualified under section 141. Option B is most appropriate answer. Why uh, he was not, why he cannot give audit report because he is disqualified. So that's why he cannot give audit report for the same and um, which among the name would be suitable for a network firm. You see, the SCO and associates would be for uh, individual firms and uh, affiliates is something that will mostly uh, be the name for a network form option d is most appropriate answer and this whole this wasn't uh, there any kind of thing and fourth one is within which date should the registration of rco trust should be done in what form in the tax audit report okay we'll see with regards to that and um uh, Okay, it has started on 31st December 2021. Uh, since it's a trust, it has to uh, get itself registered within within a year. That's 12 months, right? 12 months, that is 31st uh, December. And uh, tax audit report is 10B. That's 10B. Option C is most appropriate answer. Now, I'll see case scenario 4, 24. First question is, what can you infer from the situation in point 1? Okay, what is point 1? The auditors requested the financials of preceding previous year along with the details of the transactions till 25th May. That is, they have asked for uh, previous years for what? Opening balances for um, SA 510 uh, as auditor has to do audit as per 510, right? So that's okay. And for and also have asked to check any subsequent events till the uh, signing of audit report, right? And um, so that's also for subsequent event SA 560. So the auditors were uh, doing audit as per SCS, so there was uh, no re no no complaint with regards to that, and uh, management was right. No auditors have right to ask for details. No auditors have right to ask for both the details. The management contention is out of the scope is wrong. As option D is most appropriate also as auditor has to do audit as per standards account uh, auditing standards uh, as per SCF item. They have to check opening balances. And uh, as for 560, they have to check the subsequent events also. So that's why they have asked for is Mr., uh, Mrs. IM and Co. guilty of professional misconduct and violating provisions. Okay, what they have done. IM and Co. had, um, as it's their first order, their partners immediately accepted the work. No, as per excuse, even what you have to do, you have to communicate to the previous auditor. You have to discuss with the management, the responsibilities and evaluate the competence and the time and all. But... Uh, this is as of now with regards to the professional ethics. Uh, they have not communicated with the previous auditor, right? So as per 8 of part 1 first schedule, they have, um, as it's their first auditor, they should have previously communicated with the previous auditor. So they were guilty under clause 8 part 1 first schedule. Is Mr. I guilty of professional misconduct what he had done? Mr. I, as there was a vacancy, he had uh, rendered services in the company and joined that company and amounted to 0.2% of CTC. You see, uh, this is what uh, chartered accountants in industry were. They were guilty were. So it comes under part two as um, they were taking a part of a percentage of emoluments of their employment. They were guilty under clause one, part two of first schedule. So we'll see with regards to clause two. Part 1 of first schedule, part 2 of first schedule, that is clause B, option B. And uh, we'll see the next question is M guilty of professional misconduct, what he had done. Mr. M filed a complaint against ICA on Mr. I violating the provision. This is not a misconduct. So, no, Mr. M was not guilty of Mr. of uh, professional misconduct. Option A is most appropriate answer. And now we'll see 25th case scenario here. First question, which item should miss? select for testing so as to get the samples okay she wanted to get samples on vendor balance reconciliations can be performed okay she wanted to do reconciliation of vendor balances and wanted to do sampling with regards to that and um, we'll see the options vendor where the confirmation balance agrees the general ledger no already already something the balance agrees we don't have anything to do with regards to that and moreover balance confirmations is for confirmation requests is for the balance confirmations and there's no point in doing the first one as something that was already agreed and what we are doing we are doing reconciliation so this is not relevant and uh, second one is vendors which have high volume of business with s limited that is the entity i guess uh, so high volume of business is something like 
ओके और हाई रिस्क फैक्टर फॉर अ नॉट रिकनसिलेशन फॉर नॉट एडजस्टिंग द बैलेंस इज एंड ऑल विद रिगार्ड्स टू मटेरियल्स एंड ऑल दिस माइट बी टेकन इन टू कंसिड्रेशन एंड वेंडर्स विद बैलेंस ऑफ फिफ्टीन लैक्स और मोर एंड वेंडर्स विद बैलेंस ऑफ फिफ्टीन लैक्स और लेस दिस इज मोस्टली लाइक अ स्टैटिस्टिकल सैम्पलिंग लाइक और दे हैव सेग्रीगेटेड विद रिगार्ड्स टू सम मॉनिटरी लिमिट्स एंड ऑल दिस इज ऑल्सो अ वेरी गुड अप्रोच टू डू ऑर्डर सैम्पलिंग विद रिगार्ड्स टू दैट ऑर्डर प्रोसेस सो Uh, we'll go with two, three, and four. Two, three, and four. We'll see the answer. What it has given. Two, three, and four. Okay, they have taken the same thing. Option B is most appropriate answer. And uh, how can we sangi? If you see, there was all the other three options have one, right? Why we have not selected one? Because we want reconciliation. When reconciliation we do when something the balances do not agree. But what they wanted, they want. They have taken something that agrees, which is not at all relevant. That's why we have not. We have skipped that one, and we have seen B. And uh, how can Miss Audit Order or Audit the operating effectiveness of internal controls around the trade payables? Okay, what the auditor is doing? Auditor is doing the operating effectiveness of internal control. He is checking whether a process that is with regards to trade payables was. operating effectively or not recalculating the you see recalculating aging of trade payables is with regards to the amount of the trade payables and all what we want we want with regards to internal control select sampling and um, uh, through random sampling verify the third party evidences this, this is also with regards to balance you see there's a catch here whenever they say about the trade payables what do we think every time we think of the balance reconciliation balance is balance balance right But what the auditor is doing? Auditor is doing the operating effect on us internal control. So this is also with regards to balance. This is with regards to balance. We have to not check these two. Input a fake uh, purchase invoice into the client system to see if it's a process accurately. This is what we want. This is a walk through of a process. How we can get a more uh, reliable information through a internal control is re-performing. That is walk through of the system. This is uh, they haven't uh, given as it as a walk through, but have given the process how it's done. Option C is most appropriate while checking the operating effectiveness of internal control, and uh, this is also with regards to analytical process also the balance approach. Third one, what are the audit procedures uh, that auditor should perform to verify the payables balances of Nishi Software Limited correctly recorded in the financial statements? Okay, what that they have done Nishi. Okay, balance as per the company it's sixty five lakhs. Balance as per external confirmation is eighty lakhs. Okay, there was a difference with regards to that. Balance send a confirmation to the requesting confirm outstanding balance. They have already done that. Verify the bank payment for the period of post March. No, whenever there is a kind of balance and all, we should not uh, go and check for the bank statements or cash payments and all. What we have to check the other way round, that is the goods or uh, goods with regards to the goods we have to check because for the cash and all already there is a, a gap for that. So what we do, uh, anyways with the bank and cash payments, anyway there would be a disagreement with regards to the uh, balances. so what we have to check is we have to check the something that's related to goods in order to find the reason uh, reviewing the listing of purchase order to confirm whether it pertains to the next financial year this all is not necessary inspect of um, the goods receipt note to determine the date of receipt of raw materials yes option d is a most appropriate answer why we have not seen cs with regards to subsequent payments and subsequent this is not what we wanted for um, uh, every kind every cut off date was the same for the uh, limited we are for the nishi sunflower seeds and the and whom we are auditing right whom we are auditing and uh, edible oil limited the cut off date is the same so the balance should also be the same what we have to check is we have to check the goods receipt notes and fourth one is what would be the proper course of action for the errors 4 lakhs and 8 lakhs what the reason a uh, weak efficient control system and the uh, eight is a uh, clerical in nature uh, for the 4 lakhs it's a uh, due to deficiency in the weak efficient internal control and eight is a uh, clerical mistake okay what we'll do 
दे वॉर बिलो द मेटीरियलिटी दो द अमाउंट वॉज बिलो द मेटीरियलिटी बट द रीजन इज विथ रिगार्ड्स टू द इंटरनल कंट्रोल एफिशियंसी सो दैट वॉज नॉट ऑन द बिलो द मेटीरियलिटी सो ऑप्शन इज रॉन्ग एंड द बैलेंस टू रेक्टिफाई द सेम एंड वी आर नॉट हियर टू मेक द फाइनेंशियल स्टेटमेंट एडजस्टमेंट्स एंड ऑल वी आर हियर टू चेक द फाइनेंशियल स्टेटमेंट्स एक्यूरेटली वेदर दे आर ट्रू और फेयर एंड द वेदर द इंटरनल कंट्रोल्स व एफिशियंट और नॉट डिफरेंट सेट ऑफ सैम्पल रिप्रेजेंटिंग सेम अमाउंट एंड दे वर गेटिंग रिपीटेड एंड द ऑब्जर्वेशन शुड बी वेव्ड ऑफ ओके वॉट दे आर टॉकिंग अबाउट इट शुड नॉट बी वेव्ड ऑफ द इम्पैक्ट ऑफ एरर्स शुड बी नोटेड इन द ऑडिट ऑफ सैम्पल शुड दे वर प्रोजेक्टेड एंड एक्सट्रापोलेटेड अक्रॉस द होल पॉपुलेशन ओके दे आर सेंग दैट वी हैव टू टेक दीज एरर्स इन टू कंसिड्रेशन फॉर वाइल डूइंग द ऑडिट सैम्पलिंग टेस्ट ऑफ डिटेल्स ऑप्शन डी इज मोस्ट अप्रोप्रिएट आंसर एंड नाउ विल सी ट्वेंटी सिक्स के सीनारियो फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन वॉट इज द ओपिनियन फॉर्म बाय सी ए डेविड इन रेस्पेक्ट ऑफ द यूसेज ऑफ सिक्योरिटीज प्रीमियम अकाउंट ओके फॉर वॉट सिक्योरिटीज प्रीमियम वॉज यूज it is used for writing of unabsorbed depreciation no it cannot be used for writing of unabsorbed depreciation and issue of bonus shares as they could issue fully paid bonus shares so uh, no as securities premium cannot be used by company for adjusting unabsorbed depreciation yes option a is most appropriate answer issuing bonus shares they could issue a written representation and compliance for um, that and uh, adjusting unabsorbed depreciation and for issuing bonus shares. no option a is most appropriate answer in your opinion was the presentation of provision for doubtful debts correct as per india is 37 okay as per india is 37 what they have done or uh, they have pre- uh, created provision of doubtful debts amounting to 8 lakhs and presented under short term provisions under liabilities no uh, when you do check the analysis of financial statements chapter in fr uh, the uh, what the provision for doubtful debts has to be net of the uh, data that we could um, uh, that, that was uh, shown in the financial statements balance sheet even not only the provision for doubtful debts even the advance tax tc is or td is and everything has to be net of there so uh, the presentation in the short term is not right and it has to be net of under trade receivables option b is most appropriate answer and um, there is no no option here it is uh, it has to be shown under net of of trade uh, receivables there what is the validity of ce uh, cfo's contention with regards to disqualification under 1413 whether ca had been disqualified or not and uh, okay what do the auditor had purchased in some furniture with a huge 90% discount under clearance sale okay the purchase amount is 9 lakhs which is not more than the fees of the auditor cfo contended that this purchase there exists a business relationship between uh, the company and the ca you see this is a normal course of business like any other clearance sale like any other customer he got 90% discount under clearance sale not it's a it's not a close length price so whether ca is uh, disqualified or not he is not disqualified the contention is invalid but have to vacate office to no, he need not vacate is uh, a auditor has to vacate because he is um, disqualified under that he is not disqualified right so the contention of cfo is invalid and will not have to vacate the office option d is most appropriate answer and now we'll move with 27th case scenario here It is the act of the CA Dev of charging two percent as a consultant fee for the amount raised by startups a professional misconduct or not? As per clause ten, part one of first schedule, uh, charging fees on based of percentage uh, basis is a misconduct. But as per regulation one ninety two. they was uh, the auditor could charge a, uh, the fees as a based on a percentage on few activities but don't get uh, jumped into the conclusion that the fifth point here is certain fundraising activities here the icai had not mentioned with regards to that even in, in the act itself so uh, for this as of now they were thinking about it was not allowed it's a misconduct so the most appropriate answer is option c that is it's a misconduct under clause in part 1 of first schedule as the fundraising activities that were uh, given with regards for the startups were not that certain funds where the uh, relaxation was given 
okay so make a note over here and uh, second question is here they accept the appointment of statutory auditors of health life insurance what are the conditions with regards to uh, accepting any kind of insurance company they have to not accept all in together three and not accept more than two life insurance or more than two um general insurance what they have uh, they all he already accepted two life insurance so another life insurance he cannot accept so no he cannot accept total number of audits would be two and he cannot accept one more statutory audit of a health life insurance so that it would be three which would be violating the conditions option d is most appropriate answer what type of the treaty that safety limited has signed with help limited for reinsuring the marine business okay out of this first we'll see what all the types of reinsurance we have first thing with regards to this and it's a non-proportional uh, non treaty where the under this an insurance company buys insurance from another company to protect against big losses that is one kind of non-proportional treaty that it do not uh, they do not involve any kind of policies there etc with regards to facultative insurance reinsurance where an insurance company buy insurance for a single policy for one policy they'll buy reinsurance they'll ensure that insurance policy is reinsurance that's so only one policy is facultative insurance quota share proportional treaty is where an insurance company shares risk of a policy with another company here what they're insuring a single policy here here they were sharing the risk then it is quota share proportional treaty surplus proportional treaty is where an insurance company share the risk of a policy with another company after a certain amount of damages okay this is like percentage basis and this is like after a certain amount after an absolute amount this is with regards to whole single life uh, single policy etc and now we'll see what the safety limited had entered with help limited now okay where is this safety limited has a policy with regards to marine insurance uh, will not hold risk for more than 50 cr hence safety limited signed a contract for five years with help limited which would involve in the business of reinsurance above 50 cr for 40 percent or marine insurance premium that is after a certain amount that is surplus proportional treaty after a certain amount after 50 cr okay now what type of treaty the safety limited uh, has signed with uh, star hotels asset with regards to star hotels asset because there's a change in business environment safety limited enter a separate contract to reinsure fire insurance of star hotels asset that is a separate contract for a separate separate uh, policy so this would be what facultative reinsurance we said option a is most appropriate answer and uh, with regards to fifth one which of the following statement incorrect with regards to tata limited with regards to applicability of cost audit when cost audit would be applicable when it's more than or equal the total turnover is more than or equal to 50 cr when cost records have to be maintained when the turnover is more than or equal to 35 cr if it's not a non-regulated sector it's more than or equal to 100 cr it would be the turnover for cost audit applicability you see t limited had been set up in backward areas of west bengal under production linked investment scheme of the government so there was a no proper regulator here so it's a non-regulated sector for which the turnover limit is 100 cr since it's below 100 cr cost audit would not be applicable but it's more than 35 cr so cost record uh, would be applicable so what would be the right option it would be uh, they have to maintain cost records and subject to cost audit no they have to maintain cost records and would be subject to cost audit no they haven't given any kind of regulatory authority even in our uh, daily life in our external there's a t board that's it no our regulatory authority like rbi for banks etc and uh, tata limited have, will have to maintain cost record but not subject to cost audit yes option c is most appropriate answer in relation to corporate governance in compliance of rule regulation 17 and 17a what should be the minimum number of independent directors in premium limited 
Waters Premium Limited has Premium Limited, uh, which was 47th largest company as for market capitalization, and promoter had not hold any management position, but his brother, okay, relative of promoter, was a non-executive chairman of Premium Limited. Okay, since he was that, and um, as for board compositions, uh, period, what we have learned that, that if a promoter who is a non-executive chairman of the company, then at least half of the board should be independent directors, right? Independent directors were. So here, total number of directors were how many? 16 numbers of total number of directors. Half of that is eight. So eight have to be the independent directors. Option A is most appropriate answer. And seventh one is what should be the correct statement from the below with regards to the number of independent directors in the audit committee. As for board composition, what we have learned that an audit committee shall have at least two third members of the audit committee shall be independent directors. This is an amendment here. Please make a note out of it. Now the audit committee is having nine directors out of that two third, right? 2 divided by 3 into 9 that is at least 6 members have to be independent directors would be the answer at least or there should be at least 6 independent directors in a committee and 9 should have at least knowledge uh, as it's an MN yes option C is most appropriate answer and now we'll see 28th case scenario here first question what is the terminology for the formal program or framework that is implemented across an enterprise or company for enabling risk management. That is enterprise risk management. Can be his most appropriate answer. This is the four definition of that. What kind of risk in automated environment observed in issue one? What they have. So, with regards to issue of material, the staff approved by the tower works uh, and this entry was made by a staff is approved by assistant store manager and store manager okay a staff had made the entry and the assistant store manager and store manager had approved that okay that's fine and the very next day the staff who entered the data found some clerical error and he made changes immediately and the system accepted the same you see after the approval how could the staff who entered the data could change this is an unauthorized access right okay now what the options here it's an entity level entry related to governance organization no the entry level and the approval was right it is a risk that it process and processors being followed in terms of unauthorized access yes after the approval that uh, entry have to be blocked without uh, the without the proper access to the entity without proper approval by the staff he cannot uh, change the data Option B is most appropriate answer. No material risk, no. There's a manual internal control and uh, not connected to any automated controls. No, not that. There's no calculations that were done. It's fully automated system. What kind of risk assessment carried by the auditor in issue 2? Okay. Into what they have done. The auditor made an effort to understand the business process and he finds that there's a difference in 1,50,000 as per commission recorded in source software and the commission reflected in the accounts, okay. So there's a process, the process of the system, how the entry goes on, there's a risk with regards to that, there's a flaw there. It is evaluation of a risk and risk control process level yes the direct entity control level evaluation indirect entity control evaluation and there's no risk assessment what the auditor should do about the difference identified in issue two what's the uh, uh, the one lakh fifty lakhs is with regards to the a change or uh, inherent limitation of a process level entity that the risk with regards to the process level of the business process there what he has to do is have to plan further as per SA 315 whenever we find any kind of risk what do we do we further uh, do audit procedures for we'll do further audit procedure and then obtain the additional audit evidence and then form an opinion and pro uh, and uh, acquire that and decide with the management because it's an internal audit from the flaw and um, option E seems to be most appropriate answer how should the auditor deal with issue 3 what is with regards to issue 3 is 
while verifying the salary expenditure the auditor have been rely on the values of sap software and some hard copies and documents it's the hrm's package has been corrupt during the year and the management is having no backup data that is he, uh, what the auditor had come for he had come to obtain a, certi- a sufficient and appropriate audit evidence now their data itself is not there when the auditor cannot obtain sufficient appropriate audit evidence what he has to do he has to disclaim the opinion so option b is most appropriate answer and now we'll move on with 29th case scenario first question whether the preparation of cf is is required for the company pqr okay we'll see the here the company acquired 53% uh, shares in subsidiary limited as it's more than 50% at subsidiary so it be, uh, as per india is 110 the consolidation has to be made as option d is most appropriate answer and second one regarding the loss of fio or uh, whether what's the correct course of action as per india is 10 okay when the fire accident had taken place it had taken place on 3rd april you see there were no conditions with regards to fire accident as on the end of the date that is 31st march 2021 it's on april 3rd april 2021 so the financial statements don't get affected but what they have to do they were this is an non adjusting adjustment right as the event had occurred after the period and that after the 31st march 2021 so what we have to do we have to just uh, disclose option a is disclose the fire and need not adjust financial statement i would say non adjusting event option a is most appropriate answer is mr d liable for professional misconduct for sharing profits with mr z okay mr z offered 0.5% of total profits for the performing very well in audit okay they have to not accept the things right by mr d as a token of appreciation no they have to not accept it was um, they were guilty under the the guilty under clause 2 part 1 first schedule option b most appropriate answer and now we'll move on with 30th case scenario here first question is with regards to the tax audit of k limited what should the auditor do with respect to observation 1 what is observation 1 during the year the company had made payment for three invoices that is invoice 17518750750 and 11250 to or uh, some rent vehicles limited for hiring of vehicles okay and all the payments were settled by way of cash you see a uh, what a uh, provision attracts here it is 40 a3 right is 40 a3 but for flying and hiring of vehicles the limit is 35000 now we'll check whether these two together was um, cross the 35000 limit or not 17500 plus 18750 is more than 35000 but they were not on the same day and they were not on the same invoice you see invoice 1 was made on 15th march and invoice 2 was made on 23rd march okay so the uh, 43 reporting do not apply for invoice 1 and invoice 2 but for invoice 3 that is with regards to wages to the director since it's more than 10k the they have to be report a disallowance would occur here so as per here with regards to disallow 11250 under clause 21a so option d is most appropriate answer here regarding observation 2 what would be the right value to recognize by the company's receivable from the insurance company okay observation 2 on 31st march the company entered had taken a insurance from the new go down and uh, on the next day it paid premium on 31st night that is before paying the premium the fire accident had took place okay you see the revenue recognition for an insurance company uh, whenever the premium was taken then only insurance also come uh, starts right uh, they have to accept taking the risk with regards to uh, that since the risk was had happened before the premium that was uh, received by the insurance company so insurance company do not give any kind of amount to the entity so option a 0 rupees is something that was have to be recognized from the observation 4 can you suggest caro applicable to to the company or not okay 
we'll see here yeah the company is having share capital of 95 lakhs that is below one cr so it would not be applicable with regards to share capital during the year it had a turnover of 1.58 cr then also uh, it is below 10 lakhs it would not be allowed it would not be applicable but it's borrowing for the year ended is 58 lakhs and it had certain loan of 43 lakhs you see at any point of the time in the year if it had touched once here then caro is applicable since it had touched that caro is applicable for this entity so yes the caro is applicable because of the borrowings option d is most appropriate answer you see why they have said in any of the uh, period at any point of the time during the financial year is because of the repayment thing repayment so it would not they so entity a uh, few entities what would they they make the what of uh, the borrowings go beyond by the end of the year like the repayment that they have done in this entity so they would avoid the car applicability that's why they have taken any point of the previous years option d is most appropriate answer which among the points under observation 3 should be uh, reported under tax audit report okay what is observation 3 yes company had incurred 40,000 advertisement published by a private educational institute if it's a political party we have to uh, what we have to disclose in tax audit report clause 21 a so this we have to not uh, disclose that and um, the company reimbursed 18,000 to its employees who had uh, incurred the expenses and uh, as entry fees to the club has to be reported under tax order clause 21a and uh, we have also discussed the important clause numbers like uh, some 14 to 16 I think uh, do check that out and we'll see fifth question now does a uh, act of being appointed as financial advisor to mrs nbe mutual fund attract professional misconduct we'll see the matter with regards to that okay after completion of the above audit the firm received following assignment offer to be appointed as internal audit for hh limited okay he could be appointed that's offer or to be appointed as a statutory auditor for the hh employees provident fund okay as they were uh, it might be a trust but they were not the same thing this is a trust or uh, contribution with regards to that he could accept both the things no problem offer to be appointed as statutory auditor for a bank and simultaneously appoint as a stock audit for its branch no this is a self-review threat uh, one cannot be appointed for the stock auditor as well as a statutory auditor this would uh, bring him a misconduct guilty of misconduct or uh, to act as a financial advisor to NBE mutual fund for a professional fee of uh, 1 lakh for mutual auditor cannot be appointed as a financial advisor for a mutual fund it would be a misconduct based upon the decision that were taken by ethical standard boards it's a misconduct no it's not a right as it's a misconduct option b of yes option b is most appropriate answer we'll see next one among the assignments one that is what internal audit for hh or uh, two statutory auditor for that employee provident fund three is for internal and uh, stock auditor in the case scenario uh, received undertaking which would lead to professional misconduct it is three option c is most appropriate answer because it's a self-review threat 